Hi, I'm Sarah Clear with the Rediscovery Centre, and we're delighted to welcome you to today's workshop on bees called To Be or Not To Be. This workshop was very kindly funded by Fingal Libraries and Fingal County Council as part of the summer reading programme. So as I said, my name is Sarah Clear and I work at the Rediscovery Centre. So what is the Rediscovery Centre? Well, we're the National Centre for the Circular Economy in Ireland. And what that means is we try to get people to think more about the environment, to think more about not wasting water or energy and not throwing things away as well. So one of the things we do are we take things people don't want anymore instead of throwing them away where they might end up being incinerated, burnt, or in a landfill, we actually upcycle these things and repair them and keep them in use for longer. So things like furniture and bikes and fashion and paint. And another big thing we do at the Rediscovery Centre is education. So we deliver workshops for schools and for libraries, all about things to do with the environment and also science, technology, engineering and maths as well. So now we're going to talk about bees and this is going to be a really fun hands-on workshop that you can join in with at home as well all about bees. So are you ready? So the first thing about bees in Ireland is there's not just one type of bee, there's actually 99 different species or types of bees in Ireland. One species or type is the honeybee, and that's where we get our honey from. There's 21 different types of bumblebees, and you'll know these from your gardens as well. They're the little fat ones that tend to zoom around your gardens too. And there's also 77 different types of solitary bees. So we're so lucky in Ireland to have many different types of bees. And now we're gonna have a look at some of them a little bit more closely. So we've got a picture here of a bumblebee and you'd be very familiar with this one from your gardens and from around as well. So they've got quite a fat little body and their tails are different colours as well. And the different colour tells you what type it is, like the red tail bumblebee and the white tail bumblebee. We've got the honeybee that you're probably familiar with as well. They're quite a brown colour and you might see them zooming and, and around your garden and looking for pollen and nectar to collect as well. So sometimes they're covered in this yellow dust that's actually pollen from flowers. And then solitary bees can look quite different. Some of them might look a little bit like wasps, but they're actually bees. And some of them then are very, very small as well, like this one here. So there's 99 different types of bee in Ireland. So now we're going to talk about the body of bees and what it looks like. Bees are insects, so they have six legs. And amazingly, on their legs, they have what are called pollen baskets. And this is where they can stick the pollen from the flowers that they go around to onto their legs to bring it back to the hive. Bees also have five eyes, very strange. So two of the eyes are compound eyes, which are kind of complicated and they've got a really good sense of sight with these eyes. But they also have three simple eyes on the top of their head. And this helps them to navigate to just so to find their way around by using the sun, pretty incredible. They also have a sensory organ that we don't have called antenna, and they use these antenna to feel their way around and also to smell and be able to sense lots of different things and get messages from their fellow bees in the hive too. Bees also have two pairs of wings so that they have four wings in total, and they're exceptionally good flyers. Another thing about bees, and I'm sure you all know this, is bees have a sting on the end of their tail. Now, the thing about a bee sting is if it stings you, what will happen is the sting actually gets caught within your skin 
and the poor bee will actually die if it stings you as well. So bees really don't want to sting you. That's the last thing they want to do. They only sting you if they feel that they or their hive are in danger as well. So if a bee comes up to you when you're outside, don't flap around the place like a mad thing because the bee will think that you're um, trying to attack it. Stay very, very still and very, very calm. The bee might land on you, but when it realizes you don't have any food or you're not food, it'll fly off again. So that's just a little bit about the body of bees. Now, the other incredible thing about bees is that they can see a color that we can't see called ultraviolet, but they can't see the color red. I know, so strange. So here we've got an image of bee vision versus human vision. So humans, we can see red, orange, yellow, green, blue and violet, but we cannot see ultraviolet. Whereas bees can't see red, but they can see orange all the way through to ultraviolet. Really, really weird. So when they look at plants, they see something a little bit different, particularly flowers that are red. They won't be able to see that red color, but they can see ultraviolet. And I'm going to show you an image here of a flower, first of all, as we see it. So this is what a flower would look like to us. A yellow color, very, very plain. But if we look at it under ultraviolet light, which is how a bee would see it, we see it quite differently. So at the center of the flower is kind of like a guide that the plant is using to tell the bee, hey, there is pollen and nectar in the center here. So it's like guide marks for the um, that the flower is used to communicate with bees. Absolutely incredible stuff. Now, the other thing about bees is a lot of them will live in hives. So a honeybee will live in hives of thousands of individual bees. Bumblebees will live in much smaller hives as well, where there could be 20 to about 300 individuals in that. But the most important person in the royal family of bees is the queen bee and she lays the eggs and all the other bees come from this. So there's our queen bee in the center and you can, you can see there that she's bigger than the other bees. All the other bees in the hive will know exactly who she is because of the smell or pheromones that she gives out as well. All the worker bees these are the ones who do all the jobs, so everything from cleaning out the hive to finding food to looking after all the eggs and the newly emerged bees. These are all females. So the workers are all female bees. And there's only a few male bees called drones. And their job is when they hatch and when they get big enough, they're going to fly off and find another queen to create the next generation of bees. So there you go. So a few male drones in each hive. Most of that bees are actually females and workers, and they're the ones that you'll see flying around your garden collecting pollen and, and nectar. And the queen bee, for most of her life, spends within the hive, except when a newly emerged um, queen bee actually goes out and found, uh, starts to establish a new hive. I know, amazing, amazing stuff. Another really strange thing about bees is bees communicate by dancing. So when the worker bees are off trying to find new sources of food for the rest to collect the food and bring it back to the rest of the hive. They want to be able to tell the other bees about where exactly they found all of this food, so all of the flowers, and they communicate by using the waggle dance, so by dancing to the rest of the bees. And we're gonna watch a short video now about this. Honeybees have some fascinating abilities, among them being able to communicate by performing a unique dance. It informs hive mates where a newly discovered food source is located. Every cycle of this waggle dance roughly describes the shape of the figure eight. Let's rewind and look in more detail. 
The bee only waggles on a part of its route, the straight run, indicated here by the waved line. The secret lies in the direction of the straight run, or to be more precise, in the angle between the straight run and the perpendicular, which in this case is 90 degrees to the left. This tells the other bees that food is available 90 degrees to the left of the sun. If the angle is 60 degrees to the right, they'll be flying 60 degrees to the right of the sun. So why do we need bees? Well, bees perform a really important job called pollination. So what they do is, as they're going around from flower to flower, they collect pollen all over their bodies from the flowers. And when they visit the next flowers, they deposit or leave some of that pollen behind. The flowers then use that pollen to create new seeds. And those seeds grow into new plants. So a lot of insects, including bees, are very important pollinators. They help bring the pollen pollen from one plant to another so that those plants can create new seeds. And on this slide here, just going to show you guys some of the pollen all over the bees that have been going from flower to flower and depositing that pollen with them. So an extremely important job and a huge amount of the plants that we eat actually are pollinated by bees. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to stop the video here and have a think about what types of plants you think might be pollinated by bees. And if you'd like to go online onto Google, you can actually search and just see how many different plants are pollinated by bees. So it's everything from strawberries to potatoes, to chocolate as well actually comes the cocoa plant is actually pollinated by bees as well so a huge amount of the plants that we as humans eat are actually pollinated by bees and many many others as well and another really important thing that bees do and we get honey from honeybees so honey for us as well all comes from bees, as they collect the pollen and nectar, they bring it back to their hive and they put it into their honeycomb and they create honey that we can eat. Delicious. So some fun bee facts for you. Bees have five eyes, eyes, six legs and four wings. They cannot see the color red, but they can see ultraviolet. Bees love anything that's very sweet. Bees make honey from the nectar they the nectar they collect from flowers and they bring it back to their hive to make it into honey. Solitary bees, that's bees who live on their own and not in hives, are really good pollinators. So there's one type of bee called a, a mason solitary bee and that can actually do the work of hundreds of honeybees. Solitary bees make their nests in hollowed out twigs. Some of them make their nests in holes in wood or even in bricks. So you might have some bees actually making their home in bricks around your house or in your shed. And there's one species that lives in sand dunes and makes its nest in empty snail shells. Very, very cool. But unfortunately, bees in Ireland and around the world aren't doing so great. And there are lots of threats to bees. So can you guys think, of any threats to bees, anything that might be harming bees. Absolutely, so hopefully you guys came up with loads of ideas. One of them is that in our cities and towns and villages, there's not enough for bees to eat. So not a lot, a lot of flowers that give a lot of nectar and pollen. So we need to make sure that we plant more in our cities, towns and villages as well and that we also have good areas for bees. Because in a place like this, where there's not a flower in sight, there's hardly any trees, there's not gonna be great spaces for bees to actually live in. Where have all the flowers gone? So what do you think we could do? Well, some of the things that we as individuals 
or in your communities or even in your schools as well to help these are things like plant flowers in very large patches so there's lots of food in one area for bees. Make sure that when we're planting that we include flowers that come out at various times throughout the year. So when the bees emerge from their hibernation in early springtime, that there's food from them then throughout the summer and into autumn as well. Another really important thing is to make sure we're not using toxic chemicals. So things like pesticides or chemicals on our flowers and plants and make sure we only use natural ones that aren't going to harm our bees and other insects and animals as well. You can use local native plants or even seed bombs as well and you can get these in loads of different places but make sure that they're native which means that they're from Ireland and they're going to be really good for Irish bees too and plant lots of flower varieties with huge amount of colours and shapes as well. And there's a lot of shrubs like hawthorn. That's really, really good for bees too. So plant as big a variety of, as you can of flowers and plants and shrubs and trees and try and vary it all up. So every single type of bee will have something that they can eat in your area. So now it's time for you guys to get creative. So can you get any materials that might be in your recycling bin, so anything that's clean, and can you see if you can make your own bee using any materials at all that you can find from home? So these ones up here are ones that we made using um, the inserts from toilet or um, kitchen paper rolls and they can be really really good to do and try and get them as anatomically correct as you can so when we studied all about the the shape of bees bodies try and remember all of those so how many legs should you give it how many wings should you give it how many eyes as well you could also create something like this decoration here and actually showing the uh, honeycomb or the hive of the bees and have some little bee babies in it. And there's a huge amount of other things that you can do as well. And I know that uh, we would love to see some of your pictures as well. So don't forget to take some pictures of what you've done and you can share them on our social media. Another fantastic thing you can do is actually to create areas for real bees in your garden, your school or your community. So you can make and create your own plant pot for bees. So any type of pot will do, just make sure there's drainage, so holes in the bottom so the water can escape. And you can plant any of these amazing plants as well. So we've got a full list of plants that are really good for bees, butterflies and other pollinators. So the spring ones include primrose, cowslip and marsh marigold. Summer plants are things like foxgloves, lavender, cornflower, heather and sweet pea. Autumn plants are chrysanthemum, dahlia and bellflower. And winter ones and for really early spring are snowdrops, crocuses and hellebores. And if you go on to the pollinators.ie website, they have a massive list of, fat, of plants and flowers that are really, really good for bees and other pollinators too. And the next thing that you can do is think about how you can help bees. Create a plan for how you can help bees in your local area, even if it's an own, only a small little spot, maybe on a balcony or a back garden, or some bigger area and you can get all of your community involved. So great things to do can be creating a bee hotel and that's where solitary bees can nest. Or you could create a wildflower meadow as well. So have a think about any kind of creative ideas that you can come up with. And again, we would love to see pictures of your plan or when you actually put it into action. So that's the end of our workshop today. I really hope you learned something. 
I really hope you enjoyed it and think as well about how you might do things a little bit differently to help our Irish bees. Thank you all so much for taking part today and I hope you have fun and get out there and save those bees. <laughs>